Chuck and I had a, a little bit of a discussion on it, that you don't want to have too many ex exemptions because uh, then it raises the point, are you really targeting just one area of town or just one property in particular? Ms. Grimmler? Well, I'm just on to clarification on the residences. We, the Central Business District is mixed use. So we're really saying that residents in a mixed use aren't getting this protection. Is that? Well, we, well, what the ordinance says is it has to be a residential zone. So you're correct if there are residences above a business on Nassau Street in the CBD or along in the SB zone on Nassau Street. Um, they're not getting this protection. The, the rationale there was we, we assume if, if you buy in a business district, you expect that whatever the activity is that's there. But couldn't they make the same argument that they don't expect, they didn't expect anything to be open all night because it never has been before? Um, I'm, I'm sure somebody could argue that, but again, we were choosing in the ordinance not to have it apply because that would have been much more restrictive than the current ordinance. Okay. Um, I think we can just wait till the next meeting unless, well, can I ask, uh, I'm sorry to put Heather and Lance on the spot, would you not support um, an exemption for the shopping center at Clifftown either? Well, didn't we, did we hear that it was inadvisable? Yeah. Uh, do we still well, want to do it? Uh, Mr. Solo he recommended that. However, it's our decision. And so it, I do actually want to hear from my colleagues on it. Um, yeah, I, I, from what I'm hearing, I don't think, um, I didn't hear a recommendation from him. I didn't hear an argument from him of why we should do so. And my sense is this ordinance has gone through significant consultation with the business community, to least credit, with, the, with merchants and, and neighbors, and has gone through significant revisions, has been narrowly tailored, um, incorporates significant uh, modifications as a result of those, those consultations. So I think I support it in its current form, because I think it's a reasonable measure that will preserve neighborhoods and somebody said it really well the rhythm of our town is that you Wendy who said that um so um by codifying those existing business practices so I'm comfortable with it as written so the answer is no you would not support I would not. any other okay um can I make a comment of course. I, I really um the idea that I heard the comment that we don't listen to the neighbors, and I take great umbrage at that comment. Um, as Jenny knows, we sat through hours and hours of meetings on East Nassau um, in the former borough, um, meeting after meeting, month after month, listening to the neighbors. And what we heard um, a lot of was that we wanted a lively streetscape, that we couldn't, we didn't want financial institutions because they went dark at nine o'clock or, or, or even earlier. Um, they, they're complementary to a lot of the businesses that exist on the east end of town, and it didn't matter to people. They wouldn't consider it. So I have great frustration when then all of a sudden we're talking about having a lively streetscape, when we are talking about having a business that has lights on um, and that has products that people use. Some of the exemptions that we make for the pharmacies when, when the pharmacy itself is closed, there's very, there's not a whole lot of difference between what is sold in the drugstore and what is sold at a convenience store if the pharmacy is not open. Um, and I think the argument that, I, I, I buy into the argument that we have given a huge advantage to the university as a landlord as opposed to our own merchants. We talk about wanting to shop local and we have the opportunity to treat our merchants with a degree of fairness and we are not doing that. We, that's a huge advantage to the university to be able to keep their businesses open up beyond the hours of operation that we're recommending. And we will not let our own merchants service those students. The fact is that East Nassau is probably a closer location to many students than the Wawa is. Um, and I also want to say that whether you believe you bought your property at a discount or not, or you got a deal on it, the fact is it was built into the price of your property that you were next to a business or properties that were zoned for 24 hours, and they had been that way. So um, there will be a shift. This will increase the value of the residential properties 
if we limit the um, hours of operation and we limit the businesses that then can go into these places. So that will devalue the property for some of the business owners and it will raise the residential values. And so that will also be reflected in taxes and that's a concern for me. I think Patrick brought up at the last, uh, at the introduction, that we have done everything that we can possibly do to save money, hold the line on taxes, but one of the things left is the mix of businesses versus residential. And um, we can change that mix, and we will, but it will mean that residents will pay more. I just want to make, thank you for those comments. Just want to make one um, clarification, though, is that we're not saying that the only 24 7 businesses that can exist in town will be in an E zone. This allows a lot of 24 7 businesses throughout town, it's just saying that they can't be right next to someone's house if that person's house is in a residential zone. So I just want to make that clear. We're not saying there can't be 24-7 businesses. It's just limiting the areas where they can be. But it's not just in E-zones. It's also they can be in the Central Business District and they can be in other places in town. And I just think that's an important, I think there was some confusion on that well, point. So I just want to clarify. That in practicality, that's who, who is reaping the benefits. We're making an exception for the university at the used store, making an exception for the Wawa. Right, but there's most of Nassau Street in the Central Business District, and Witherspoon Street in the Central Business District is still going to be able to be open 24-7. So there's, there's places in town that will still be 24-7. Um, okay. What? what we heard is that properties that abut a residential zone in the CBD cannot uh, be open 24 hours, but others can, correct? Correct. In the CBD, if the property does not abut a residence, it, it can be open 24 hours. And there was, for those who are interested, there was a map that is online that was um, part of the agenda packet from when this was introduced, which I believe is on November 10th or November 17th. So if you, um, if you look back, you can look at the map and see um, what, what, which businesses are, which properties are impacted and which are not. Um, are there any other comments, Mr. Simon? Yes, I wanted to, to simply share with uh, the audience and, and those who may be watching this meeting um, some of my thinking in uh, with respect to this ordinance. Um, of the issues that have been raised, there's really only one that unambiguously is addressed, and that is the issue of light uh, pollution in the hours affected. That unambiguously would be helped. All of the other issues that have been raised, it's not entirely clear what the impact of this ordinance would be one way or the other. Uh, the ordinance seems to be designed really to placate people more than to solve real problems. And, and that is something I find um, uh, dissatisfying inherently. Um, the, uh, I don't want anybody to think that their concerns are unreasonable. And I also don't think anyone should take away from my position that your expectations one way or the other are unreasonable. Um, the, uh, in, in theory at least, this is, uh, you know, there's certainly a, a lot of reasonability built right into this. Um, but let me um, uh, point out that if the Wawa that had been there had not closed, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It would be open 24 hours and we'd be um, going about our, our business and we wouldn't be having this conversation. And I think combined with the fact that, that what people are really complaining about are the potential for issues that, to the extent that they've materialized, they've materialized from businesses other than the businesses that we're talking about under this ordinance. Uh, we're, we're, really not taking an effective action if we pass this ordinance. So I, I did hear at least one resident call for us to compromise and, and to, to work toward a reasonable compromise, which is why I asked the question I did. Um, notwithstanding my feelings on it, I can count the votes and we will lose if, uh, if we try to vote the way it is now. So I would like to limit the damage, but if none of my colleagues are willing to move, then I'm not going to move the amendment even though it would pass today. It would, it would not have any, it would not have any long-term uh, benefit. It would simply delay the passage of the ordinance overall by a few weeks or a month or two, um, just because of the way the process would work. 
So um, I, I think I've gone on long enough at this point. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, and if there's no further comments from council, then um, we'll extend the public hearing um, until our meeting of December 15th. I think we have to have a motion to do that. And I'm willing to make that motion. I don't think, I asked beforehand and we don't need to. Well, public hearing hasn't been closed. I think the mayor is just announcing it's continuing until December 15th. I don't believe you need a motion for that. Thank you. Okay. Let me, can I ask another question, though? If someone moved it, how, how, if we wanted to vote on it tonight, then how would that happen? Well, interestingly, uh, <laughs> you would need a motion to adopt the ordinance, because right now there is no ordinance. So the motion would have to be in the affirmative to adopt it. Well, wouldn't you have to close the public hearing would to... would have to close the public hearing prior to somebody moving adoption of the ordinance. That's correct. So, so just to be precise, we normally don't do this, but we'd have to move to close debate and then move to adopt the ordinance. So, well, and, and just the public hearing I don't, is not the debate. The public hearing is for the council to hear from the public. It's actually not part of the debate. The debate is on the motion. All right, well, I'm sorry. Let me, let me understand. What I think you just said, though, is we would have to move to close the public hearing. Is that correct? Well, the way it typically works is actually that the mayor either closes the public hearing. Some of my governing bodies, the mayor will call for a motion. But it is generally the person who is chairing the meeting, in this case it's the mayor, who makes that determination, either by asking for the motion or simply closing the public hearing. Well, just, just to maybe cut this short, I'm not in favor of uh, closing the debate or closing the public hearing. So if you're going to move that, I'd, I'd prefer to extend to Council President Miller the courtesy of being able to vote. Oh, no. I, I would, too. I was just trying to figure out what she was actually saying, and that if we did want to move ahead, I think we could close debate. The council has the authority to do that, but I, I wouldn't support it. Okay. Well, I think I will extend the public hearing to the 15th, and that was everybody's lesson in parliamentary procedure for this evening. <laughs> so, thank you, and I want to thank everybody for, for coming out. I know this has been a long process, and um, I'm sure we'll see some of you back we'll here next week. We'll see you on the 15th. Um, can I just get a show of hands if there's anybody here for their Westerly Road curbing assessment public hearing? No. Okay. Well, this one should be short then. Um, I would like to, are there any questions from council about no. Westerly Road? Okay. Um, I'd like to open up the public hearing. And um, seeing no one, I'm going to close the public hearing. I don't know if there are any um, questions or comments from council on this or if there's a motion to approve this resolution so moved second. it's moved by mr liverman and seconded by miss howard all in favor aye. aye aye any opposed the resolution passes unanimously um and now we come to um our set of resolutions the first one is resolution 14-359 bid award for improvements to hamilton avenue Prospect Avenue and Poe Road to South Brothers General Contractors, South River, New Jersey, in the amount of $840,965.08. I won't ask what the eight cents is for. Um, <laughs> but we had um, some questions beforehand from Mr. Simon, because I know we've passed um, uh, we've talked about Poe Road, but the Hamilton Avenue and Prospect Avenue haven't come to council yet, so um, there's still some flexibility in here. You can just confirm that we still have some ability to, um, if we want to make changes to what's exactly proposed right now, we still have that flexibility. Yes, we do have that flexibility. Uh, the, the bid is put together with unit quantities. Um, so we do have the flexibility to adjust quantities based upon decisions made. Uh, for Hamilton Road specifically, the curbing is not changing, um, and, and that would have been a, a substantial change to the contract. In this case, it's only striping. Okay. And I see Dr. DiMartino there. Did you want to speak to this resolution? 
Okay, yeah, I just, I, I want to just ask my colleagues up here if anybody has any questions. If that answered your questions, Mr. Simon, from before, if you had any other. Uh, I think so. Just to confirm, Mr. Kaiser, you sent your email to the entire council, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay, and um, in terms of the proposed changes, uh, the, the, the changes on Poe Road have already been discussed. The change on Hamilton has not, and that would require council action, but the only change to the bit of striping, at least the, in terms of what we expect the outcomes to be. There's obviously um, a, a decision that could go farther than that. But And then on prospect, if I understood correctly, there is no discussion before council required. Is that correct? That's my understanding. I defer to uh, our, our attorney, uh, uh, Trisco, uh, on this. Sorry, I was just pulling up your email because I hadn't had a chance to look at it before <laughs> before tonight. So um, I'm sorry. Where did and, and if I could if I could just mention regarding prospect, as uh, Deanna said, uh, the contracts are, are unit price uh, contracts, so we can make any adjustments whatsoever. If you take a look at the at the bidding documents, it says for bidding purposes only, and then we. We have the ability to make changes uh, when we turn these bidding documents into construction documents. Okay, and we don't run afoul of any state purchasing laws in doing that, even if the amount changes substantially? I don't believe so, but I, I can give you confirmation, but okay. not that I'm aware of. And, and part of the reason for actually doing it this way, which is a little bit perhaps the way I guess I wouldn't like it is that we actually need to award the bid by the end of the year in order to qualify for state matching funds. Is that correct? Exactly. The, the, the bid needs to be awarded by December 20th in order to meet DOT's requirements uh, relating to the $250,000 grant uh, for this project. And, and is that grant for all three of these combined or is it for any specific yeah, sub-project within that? Uh, the grant is for Hamilton and Prospect only. It was a grant that was awarded to the former borough for consolidation. And, and with respect to Hamilton, is it contingent on the specific recommendations that have come out of the um, TNT committee, or is it more general improvements? It's general improvements of milling and resurfacing for each roadway. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dr. DiMartino, would you like to speak on this? Yes, thank you very much and, and, and good evening. My name is Bob DiMartino and my wife and I live at 820 Princeton Kingston Road. So we would be affected by the project on Poe as our property borders 250 feet on Poe Road. We are one of the seven families that would be affected by the project, all of who have signed a petition opposed to this project. However, I have spoken once before on the project, and my request to the council, I don't know what suggestions may have already been made, but is that if a sidewalk must be constructed on Poe Road, that it be placed on only one side of Poe. Every street in our area, uh, in Princeton, where they have added a sidewalk, this includes Roper, Tyson, Prospect, Dodds, and Snowden, have sidewalks on only one side. All of these streets have far more foot tra tra traffic than Poe, and even with an eye towards the future, there's no reason to assume that this would change in any way. I see no reason why our little section of Poe would have to be singled out and saddled with sidewalks on both sides, as the only road having that. A sidewalk on only one side of Poe would be a great cost savings to Princeton as well as to the families on Poe. Again, uh, five of the seven families are made up of senior citizens, retired folks living on fixed incomes. And actually, Mr. Kaiser, who was kind enough to meet with me last week, suggested that I come to council tonight to present this as a cost-sharing savings measure to the council since the ordinance has passed back in October called for a sidewalk on both sides. Apparently, the project will not begin until the end of March next year, so there is plenty of time to make the adjustments in the contract if the one-side cost savings measure is approved. We think it's reasonable. While I understand that if the council approves this cost saving measure, it would yet have to be decided 
on which side of Poe the sidewalk would be constructed. But if I may add, however, if sidewalks are ever added on Princeton-Kingston or Route 27, because of the bridge on Princeton-Kingston Road next to my house over Harry's Brook, it is not feasible to build a sidewalk in front of our property on Route State Highway 27. So if a sidewalk on Poe on our side would, would not meet with anything, um, and at the same time, if the existing sidewalk on Prospect is, and I believe that's in the master plan, is extended to Princeton-Kingston Road, a distance of about two blocks from Carnegie Drive, it would also be on the opposite side of Poe. In any event, I would like to thank you for considering this suggestion. Thank you. Can I, can I ask a question? Yep. Um, so, um, Bob, was this, all the neighbors are in favor of this? I mean, I mean, no, I mean, if, um, if they go to one side, one side. Well, uh, typically what, what is done is if there's a sidewalk installed on one side, we encourage the neighbors to get together and share in the, share in the cost. And those agreements would, would need to be uh, uh, reached. I know that also council want, wishes to consider the, uh, the cost sharing formula that's been used in the past prior to this work being done, and we're, we'll be providing information for Council's consideration in that regard uh, in January. Ms. Ms. Grimmer? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm very sorry, but I, I am not in favor of um, putting sidewalks on only one side of the street. I, I feel like it forces um, people, especially children, to cross. You know, really, it, it, it's not as pedestrian friendly, and I think if we're going to put sidewalks on the street, we should put them on both sides. Mr. Simon? The, can I ask the, the uh, section of Poe Road that adjoins the section that's under consideration here uh, has sidewalks on one side or both sides, and if so, which side? Uh, uh, the balance of Poe Road, uh, that is from Random Road all the way to Sh Shady Brook, currently has sidewalks on both sides of the road. Okay. Okay. But that was when the neighborhood was constructed as that way, not an added sidewalk. Well, that's what well, I'm trying um, to say. J just to, uh, I guess, voice uh, my personal opinion on this, I, I would be in favor of sidewalks on one side of the road if every single neighbor agreed to it. Because uh, it, it does, and we actually have this uh, in my neighborhood. We have it on one side. Mm -hmm. It. Um, uh, the cost sharing, I assume, would be we would still cost share to the exact same residents in the same formula, just a reduced cost. Um, but the but that does not extend to the maintenance cost. Um, and and so if the uh, neighbors agreed to 100% agreed to it, I would be in favor. Of it. I don't know if the rest of Council is in favor or not in favor, other than Ms. Crumler, who's already voiced her opinion. Well, as Mr. Simon and Ms. Crumler know and I think we briefed all of council on this. I hope we did. We had a conversation at um, the last public works meeting um, about possibly changing our um, sidewalk um, funding policy. And it was something that came up, I believe, when we were discussing Poe Road. And there seemed to be um, interest um, from public works and I think that we still needed to work out more of the details about changing the policy so that the municipality took on um, more if not all of the expense of sidewalk installation which would render that the, the fee part at least um, moot. I, I don't disagree and if that changes people's opinion that's fine. My position on this stands the same either way. If the, the neighbors, 100% of them agreed to one side, I'd be in favor of that, um, uh, whether or not they're charged a fee for the installation. Um, it, it, the, there is a cost saving to the community if it's only on one side. Absolutely. And, and so that's, uh, but, but it has to be 100% of the property owners. If, it, if there's one exception, then I would say we would want to go forward with the plan as it is. I, but that, that's my opinion, and I, right. I don't speak for the entire council. So I, I just have a process question, too. So is it engineering's recommendation that we go ahead and authorize this amount for the bid, and then 
if there's a if there's a change in the sidewalk, I think more it's more of a problem for spending more than what's here. But if if we decide to go to one side, we can still make that adjustment. Uh, yes, that, okay. uh, very definitely. We certainly have that flexibility, and there wouldn't be any difference any more than uh, or there'd be much less than twenty percent uh, change in the in the bid. So there wouldn't be any problem in making that type of an adjustment. Okay. Um, all right, well, I would then recommend to council that we move forward with this and leave open the possibility if there's interest. I don't know if there's interest from more than Mr. Simon to... That's, I think it's a good idea to just get that cleared up. I'll, 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 I'll wait. You mean get cleared up well, how we feel about the idea. I'll weigh in um, that, you know, I'm torn because I think it will, two concerns with that proposal. One, I agree, you would need everybody on the street, but you're really... you're. Um, you have a once in a generation opportunity to fix the street and so you may have all the current owners agreeing but in five years you could have a change in ownership and but you would have lost the opportunity you know for until you know the next time you're doing significant road work 20 30 years um, the second is that I think it would undermine com our complete streets policy which we've said we you know you know I worry that we we adhere to policies in, in the abstract, but not when they're applied in real life situations. And we've agreed to the complete streets policy that when you have, when you're opening up a street for work, you got to put in the sidewalk. Sidewalks are really important to, to promoting pedestrian safety. And I agree with Jenny that with kids having to cross, you know, and there may not be kids there now, but there may be kids there in the future, and you've lost the opportunity to put in the put in the sidewalk. So my general sense would be that it would undermine what is a relatively new policy of com complete streets, and um, you know, it, it has a, it's a generational commitment being made now that we might regret down the road. So that would be my those would be my concerns. If we hear from somebody else who hasn't spoken yet. Well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of, I think the reason why I brought up the, um, I asked the question because I'm kind of torn. Um, I do understand what you're saying. If all the neighbors agreed for one side, mm -hmm. um, I do understand, you know, how the cost effective effectiveness of that. But um, I, I'm also um, torn because, as you see, a lot of neighborhoods now that didn't have um, children years ago. We're starting to have children today, and I don't know if 10 years down the road, if that sidewalk, you know, will make a big improvement or not um, on the other side. So I think for me, it's, and I mentioned it before, it's the whole cost element. So I would love this, love to hear when they come back to us in regard to what the um, division is going to be between uh, property owner and municipality in regard to paying, and then I think that would help me out a little bit, a little bit more, um, unfortunately. So. Okay. I don't know if you want to weigh in, or I mean, I, I think for what. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just trying to understand. Do we need to make a decision on this tonight? But I mean, can't we approve the resolution? We don't have to. But I was just advising. Yes. No. We we do need to approve the resolution, and the right, amount can stay the same no matter what. I was right. just going to. I wanted to give Dr. DiMartino a little bit more direction in terms of what our next steps were going to be, if we were going to open up this discussion, or if there was a general consensus on council that because there's sidewalks on both sides of the street for the rest of the street, um, you know, a commitment to complete streets and the right. fact that we're relooking at the um, how the sidewalks get funded, that there's a there's a pretty much a consensus that we'd like to go move forward with the current plan. Doesn't the, didn't the master plan call for sidewalks on both sides? Is that the connectors or not? No, the master plan simply calls for a sidewalk. It doesn't indicate whether the sidewalk should be on both sides or it should That's be correct. on one side or the, or the other side. That's correct. Do you, when you look at the plan of what we're trying to accomplish here in the broader sense, does it make sense to have it on one side or does it make sense to have it on two? I mean, s putting aside <laughs> all the <laughs> other good issues right. that right. Jenny and Heather have mentioned about the fact that th this is our one shot at it mm -hmm. for 20, 25 years. As I see it, this is really a, a, a question that relates to consolidation because in the former township, 
uh, the former townships policy was if neighbors agreed to put a sidewalk just on one side of the road. Mm -hmm. But as I understand in the former borough, the requirement mm -hmm. was if sidewalks were installed, they're installed on both sides of the road. And, and, and just in taking it on the merits, independent of the precedent, this is very similar to the debate on, on Scott Lane, right? And, and the question is, you know, what's the, what's the benefit versus cost to the town and to the community overall, right? And it's really for us to weigh and decide. It, there's, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's, it's, a, it's a judgment call. Well, I'm going to step in and say that it sounds like I'm not hearing 100% consensus on this one. So I will say that we'll probably take another look. But I would encourage, in terms of if we want to do the two sides or the one side, and I think we'll get back to you and the neighbors in terms of how that process is going to move forward. Um, and I think that there's still, with the acknowledging that, I think there's still some strong feelings about some people feel like it should be on both sides, and maybe some people are willing to consider one side. Um, but I would encourage council so that we get our matching funding for this to uh, go ahead with this resolution tonight. So moved. Second. Um, moved by Mr. Simon and seconded by Mr. Leverman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, passes unanimously. Thank you very much for your comments. Yeah, I'd like to thank you. Thank you, too. And also say that uh, if you do look at this again, and it looks like you are, we would like to work with council and with Mr. Kaiser on that. Okay. The thank neighborhood, you. Our little neighborhood. Th thank you. Th thank you for coming back to speak to us. And also I want to thank Ms. Stockton for making a special trip back <laughs> to answer my questions. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Okay, um, next is resolution 14-360, which is a resolution Palmer, uh, Princeton Palmer Square Limited Partnership to ground lease estoppel certificate. And um, this was just to reaffirm. Sorry, Mayor? Yes. I, I apologize if I missed it. Did you, did you vote on the resolution for you? I'm very sorry yeah. for asking. How did yes. I miss that? <laughs> we passed unanimously. <laughs> Maybe it went too fast. <laughs> I apologize. No problem. It's usually not our, um, we don't get blamed for that very often. Um, okay, uh, so going back to resolution 14-360, which is um, for the Palmer Square garage, and it's to um, reaffirm the ground lease um, because Palmer Square is going out for refinancing and needs this document from us. It seemed fairly routine. I don't know. Isn't it just, tell, Sophia, don't think. we're just saying, oh yeah, they've, they're up on their rent, right? Correct. That's my understanding, that okay. they're, they're in compliance and the lease is in effect. Okay. Is there a, a motion for this? So moved. Second. It's moved by Ms. Butler, seconded by Ms. Howard. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, it passes unanimously, but um, Mr. Liverman stepped away. Um, next is resolution 14-361, a resolution for updated salary adjustments. Um, this is a revised salary ordinance from um, the one we passed earlier this year, and it acknowledges um, some changes that were anticipated um, when we hire somebody new. Oftentimes they're um, hired under a probationary period, and once they've been here for a while and are performing their job um, to expectations, then their salary gets bumped up. Um, and also it recognizes some employees who've um, taken on additional responsibilities. Um, I don't know if there's any uh, further comment or questions from council on this one. There, it also includes merit. I mean, it, oh, correct. some merit increases as well. And I, I noticed that there are some people who are on here twice. I sent you an email earlier in the day about um, uh, um, why some people are listed both as full-time and then also part-time summer. Something. They're, they're actually both part-time. Um, what you had were there were two individuals who were outreach coordinators. Mm -hmm. um, what they did for the summer program was instead of hiring additional part-time staff, they increased the hours. So you'll see them in two locations. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion? So I'll move it. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Ms. Cromeller and seconded by Ms. Howard. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
a resolution passes unanimously. Um, last resolution tonight is 14-362 PSA with Mazer Consulting PA not to exceed $5,000 for the review of the Route 27 Nassau Street, Washington Road, Van Diemener Avenue, New Jersey DOT traffic signal design. And um, this is an intersection that has um, um, required a lot of attention and discussion um, from staff and um, from the governing body because of its um, um, unfriendliness, I'd say, to pedestrians. And so this is for, um, to partially fund, and the DOT would pay the, the rest of the money to fund a study looking at a pedestrian only crossing there like we have at the other end of Nassau Street um, in front of Monument Hall. And um, I did reach out to Princeton University on this because as part of the MOU, um, they agreed to fund three, um, three pedestrian improvements on Nassau Street, which have been somewhat stalled um, because of concerns over historic preservation and from the DOT. And there's language in the MOU that would allow that money to be applied for other intersection crossings on Nassau Street. So it doesn't impact our voting for this PSA tonight, but if it's council's pleasure, we could certainly ask the university to apply some of those funds towards this. And then um, if we are asked to um, help to fund whatever improvements get made there, um, to ask them to, to put in for the um, municipal uh, municipalities portion of that. Can you clarify this? Why the five thousand dollars? I don't know that we necessarily want to dip into the MOU. That's one hundred and fifty thousand dollars per um, intersection. I thought they agreed to three three intersections at one hundred and fifty per. I, I don't. Well, I mean, it's five thousand dollars. I thought we were going to have to pay a lot more than that. This is just a study. This isn't even the. Let, let me give you some of the history here. Uh, we've made very good progress on this intersection. And Deanna's been working closely with the uh, DOT uh, uh, Traffic Design Department. Uh, they have agreed to go ahead and design uh, the intersection, which they've done. Uh, they asked for Princeton to enter into a cross-share agreement, which we did a few months ago, committing to 25% of $160,000 cost to replace the entire traffic signal. It was Princeton's intent that that tra traffic signal would then provide for an all pedestrian cross cycle uh, because of the huge amount of pedestrian traffic at, the, at, at that location. DOT studied it and they just recently told us, okay, the design is ready to go. We're going to be ready to install the signal uh, this spring. Uh, but not as an all-pedestrian cross-cycle. They would go from a two-phase cycle to a three-phase cycle, which would improve things, but not get it to the point where we would like to see it. So as a result, we reached out to uh, Mazer Consulting, who works very, very closely with uh, DOT on these type of items, uh, reviewed it with them, and we would like them to take a look at DOT's design and the, thing, and, the, and the signal phasing to see if we can build a case that was, when it's installed, it's an all pedestrian phase cycle. In speaking with DOT, Deanna, had, uh, quite a, Deanna and I had quite a discussion with them. They said that the signal as designed would have the ability to switch over to all pedestrian phase. We pressed them on how they could have an all pedestrian phase uh, at Nassau and 206, but not at this location. And the response was, well, there's too much pedestrian traffic at this location. It would slow down vehicular flow. So this would be a start to have Mazer take a look at it. What we may get into down the road is really doing a corridor study between looking at Nassau, looking at University, looking at uh, Witherspoon, and looking at this location to build a case at how those uh, signals could be coordinated to move the traffic without uh, uh, it being a problem 
with each of those signals to be an all-pedestrian cross. So this will be a start. We'll see where this takes us. But then, uh, as Mayor Lempert reaching out to the university, there may be some additional costs that would be helpful to fund the entire corridor study if we determine it's, need, it's necessary. And when we only go that route, uh, if necessary, we're hopeful that Mazur could build a case, hopefully at this point, without that. But the overall goal is for all the signals between Washington and 206 to be all pedestrian phase. And the, if we do ask the university for this $5,000, it's not, that counts towards the 450, but it only subtracts 5,000 from that total amount. It's not equivalent to $150,000. Mr. Simon, did you have a uh, question? Yeah, I just, uh, I guess for Mr. Kaiser, I had a question about um, what work they're actually doing. It, it looked to me like they were gonna collect some data and write a report, and it might be a few hours work. Uh, and I can't quite tell if it's if the five thousand dollar fee is justified. The, the the root of my question, I guess, is I see the hourly rates at the end of the the proposal, and I see a five thousand dollar fee. I don't see anything that connects them in the proposal or in the resolution. And so I'm trying to understand if um, you know if you've talked to them, and yes, it needs thirty hours of work, which would perfectly justify this given their rates. Or is this something that can be done in a few hours on their time and, and they're just willing to do it if we give them $5,000? We would really take it uh, step by step. We would only pay them, pay them for the hourly, hourly, at the hourly rate for the, work, uh, for the work that's needed. We would be very closely monitoring this, but we'll, we'll take it step by step and see, see uh, where we go. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. So it, it is, it is um, charged hourly not to exceed 5000 Right. Yes. All right, that, that's, that's correct. That's fine. Yes. I missed that. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Have we moved it? No. So moved. It's moved by Ms. Butler. Second. And seconded by Ms. Krimler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, resolution passes unanimously. And now we come to our uh, consent agenda, which contains items of a routine nature passed by a single vote. Are there any items on the consent agenda that anybody on council would like removed? Well, I, I have a question on the bills. But I, I, I could ask it before we. Yeah, we ask it. What does the bl there's blanket, all these blankets on there. Did anybody else? When they're the vouchers, a blanket voucher simply. Oh, is that means, what it is? Blanket voucher. Right. That simply means it's either a contract and they're paying only a portion of a contract. So it's a five thousand dollar contract. They're only paying down a portion of that. Okay, because um, so I don't think that's been on. We don't usually have so many of those. I'm not sure. Or else maybe, okay. I need to pick that up. I thought there were actual blankets for PFARs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you clarified. Yeah. <laughs> so um, they're going to be I, warm I, this winter. I do have another question on the, on the bills. <laughs> There's, there is one item on here for 136,900 and change uh, for 2014 Dodge, which as it appears on here, looks like we're paying for a single vehicle. But I, I guess I want to know, is that correct? And if so, is that really the dollar amount? It, it doesn't. Uh, Hold on one second, please. It's on the first first page of the list of bills, and I'm sorry for not raising it earlier so that you could research it. Give me one second. Let me look. <coughs> I'm sorry, Patrick. Who's it? Who's it made out to? Who's the check written to? Um, it says 2014 Dodge. And then there's a number, and the amount is 136,946.45, and it's on the first page of the bills. I would have to do some additional research to find out what that is. Um, yeah, I see that. Huh. <laughs> yeah, what I have to do additional research. Um, well, can we take it off then? Well, I know, I mean, I just want to say, I know that we purchased, I think it was three or four Dodge police cars. Oh. So I don't know if that's what it is or not. We you just know, purchased, like, three, where we purchased three or four Dodge police cars. It's got to be more than one. I just don't yeah, know. Oh, no, it's not, one, it's not one car. Right. It's like three or four. We just uh, purchased. Okay, well, uh, yeah, 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 I, I think let's just leave one. it in place. But if you, would, if you wouldn't mind providing us with the information as follow-up, you know, if we've made an error, if you determine in the research we've made an error, then just don't 
proceed with paying that. But otherwise, <laughs> well, and I would also fine. like, yeah, this is the, sometimes there are items in the bill list, and it I, I would it, it helps if it would say three, yeah, because it happened with iPads before. You know, there was an, uh, an expensive iPad, and and then it turned out it was more than one. So, be helpful next time. No, that was my only question on the bills, so I'm, I'm happy to move. Okay, and I was just going to um, thank the clerks for um, the bill list last time. We had an issue with the page number obscuring some of the numbers, and that's all cleared up, so thank you. We're getting there. Yes. <laughs> well, although speaking of the bill list, you know, in the past, it used to have the um, referring um, num resolution number or ordinance, and I think as good government, if we could possibly include that, I think it's a good practice. And we used to do it, and now we're not. It does for some, but not for all. Oh, does it? I didn't see them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the thing of it is, is, is the program, best I can explain it, the way the program was, it had identifiers. You're not on your mic. mic on You're not on your mic. You're not on your mic. The way the identifiers were on the page, it was especially on the bills list through the program it was blocking certain things on the bills list so it's a formatting problem it was a formatting problem in the program versus the way the bills list was laid out okay so well, maybe we can figure that out yeah so it, though i had to take off the take on take it off through the program the way the program was laid out so that you could see everything in the in the bills list um, so you can so you could read the bills list accordingly right I mean maybe we could do it in landscape so, mode because I mean as a member I mean well, it's I'm just gonna have to go back and check with the program okay okay it's it's the it's it's the program the agenda program We'll work through that. I move sure. the entire consent agenda. Okay. okay. Thank you, I, Mr. Simon. I, I is, a, is there a second? <laughs> yeah, I have a quick question, though, on this. The, um, the resolution for property tax abatement at 14 Clearview, there were two properties there, though, right, it, that we got from PFARs? Why are we just, should it, should it say eight and? Oh, I'm sorry. I see in the memo here. Eight has been on the tax exempt status since it was utilized by PFARS as part of its operation. So 14 must be, that was have been idea. rented. Okay, I'm clear. Thank you. Is that also a second, Ms. Butler? Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, moved by Mr. Simon and seconded by Ms. Butler. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Um, consent agenda passes unanimously. And is there a motion to move into closed session? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed?